Hello and welcome everyone. We are once again back at the 2018 NFL Drafty series of signs. Uh, I made these ones last summer actually. I just still have a few more videos to put out. This one I believe his name is Duvanta Lampkin. It's Duvanta or Duvante, I'm not sure. I don't know him personally. I just make the signs. This is a different sign that I've done. This is at this point in time, this is the first time I had worked with uh, resin. So it was definitely something different and um, a pretty fun project to do actually. Let's get to it. Sure we hold everything together and in case you're wondering why I'm using masking tape um, instead of the regular transfer paper and it's since because I'm not selling this as a vinyl decal um, and it's just me I'd rather not waste the transfer paper uh, it's cheaper to buy masking tape <laughs> So that should be pretty decent. And you can see, can you see that? Yeah. How close to the edge you're gonna get. I'm gonna kinda of trim this, you know, around the design. Lightly spray. I think I will just use this little small uh, straight bit. It's the smallest one I have. Um, I'm not going to be able to get into this tight of a space here, um, but it'll come close. So let's uh, not to forget our goggles, because yes, I I have had. Lots of chunks of wood and sawdust and <clears throat> whatever um, thrown into my eyes, and it doesn't feel good. Even wearing the regular uh, safety glasses that doesn't have this kind of extra foam, uh, I've gotten stuff in the glasses, so this kind of helps block it out more. I mean, they're cheap, but it works. All right, so the first thing I'm doing here is just taking the router and I want to say outlining, but technically I'm carving inset, but I'm going around the edges um, of the flame shapes. And you 
gets you here, then I'm kind of going to the center and knocking out the rest of the Here I'm just kind of marking my border. This is going to be where I will cut around the edges with the uh, jigsaw.
this sander or any other electric sander. So just taking some files here and kind of knocking it down a little smoother. I'll, I'll go back with some sandpaper a little later. Finally, just a uh, small round over bit to make the edges softer. And here I just wanted to take care of the back side before we do any of the resin work. Uh, just carving out the keyholes putting my stamp and signature on it. So being new to resin at this point, um, I wasn't sure how much the powder would tint the resin. So I ended up uh, painting uh, the D and, and the flames and all that um, just in case, but uh, it really wasn't necessary as you'll see. The resin had enough color tint in it to, um, to not require any painting. Also note for uh, first time users, don't use these blue or red cups like I'm using. The resin will get hot and it'll start melting it. Which uh, may not be good if your resin work time is not very long. So right here as I'm pouring more resin, it kind of looks like it's in two different colors, but actually that lighter color is just a lot of bubbles. I'm going to use the uh, blowtorch here in a second and it'll basically pop all those bubbles. The, the heat will draw all the air out. Now your eyes are not playing tricks on you. That one is a slightly different shade of purple. Um, we did that on purpose just to kind of give it a slightly different look, to give it a kind of a distinction that that curve and the other section is actually two different letters. 
it's it makes a D, but it also is a D and an L. So we want to just give it a slightly different tint. And I slightly overfilled the letters here, but um, the flames get overfilled as well. But it doesn't really matter. I mean, the whole thing is going to get sanded down again. Watching the bubbles pop is it's actually pretty satisfying. <laughs> Makes it look like glass. It's done. Check on this later. Well, this isn't working very well. So we'll try this belt sander instead. sent down a little bit there and uh, I'll be able to get the other little chunks off the side there as well. So I'm just sanding down to get rid of most of the scratches from the belt sander. Uh, I believe I'm using the uh, 80 grit, or maybe 120. <clears throat> um, then I'm gonna go to doing some kind of uh, wet sanding, starting with a 400 grit. Alright, so we're wet sanding here with some soapy water. Starting with 400, then going to 800, 1000, and 2000. I believe that's the last one. I don't have any micro mesh, so. Um, the, the 2000 actually works pretty good. I ran into a little issue later on, though. Using a clear 
coat, but I'll tell you about it then. As you can see, uh, 2000 grit West Sanding actually came out pretty good. A little polish on here, it would be fine. But that's not what I do. So because I am not going to cover the whole thing with resin. I still want to protect the wood around it. And so I'm using this Krylon clear coat on everything. And for whatever reason, I mean, I've seen other people use this and without any issues, but on mine, it kind of leaves this texture on the resin. Then I tried this automotive scratch repair polishing compound and while it may or may not have helped, definitely didn't make things better. And as you can see it kind of took away some of the glossiness off the resin. So, what did I have to do? I put on more of the clear coat. And to be honest, I kind of actually like the texture of these. No one else is doing anything like that, so might as well just keep it like that. And of course, it wouldn't be the same without having some uh, burned edges. And of course, I mean, those are flames on the side, so gotta add some burning there too. There's actually one more thing to tell you, but it doesn't matter because I didn't get it on film. But this resin is actually glow in the dark. So I thought that'd be a cool feature if it's stuck in the light all day and glow <coughs> all night. As always, like, subscribe. Until next time. <laughs>